The timeline is broken, the multiverse is spiraling out of control, and it's all the fault of... Captain America? When last we left Doctor Strange, he was quietly paying his respects to the man he traveled in space with, fought Thanos twice, and was key to saving our reality. Cool. Feet up, sling ring to Cabo for some well-earned rest and relax... oh no. Wanda's unlocked her true powers and is now trying to force her impossible children into existence after warping the reality of an entire town in New Jersey. Then, a version of Loki named Sylvie literally set off time bombs and stabbed the one guy holding reality together and his more dangerous self in check. All of this, however, might be tracked back to old man Steve Rogers. That's right, the moral center of the Marvel Universe might have broken the entire thing just so he could get that dance he was denied when he decided to go down with the plane back in World War II. That's the theory of TikToker Mark Wrighton and he just might have a point. There are a lot of candidates for Doctor Strange's not helping list. Apparently, acting director Hayward had been trying to jumpstart Vision for the five years that half of all life was on a timeout. When that didn't work, he thought he'd jumpstart it by using Wanda Maximoff's grief. It worked, but since he wasn't a fan of superheroes, he hadn't been paying attention. The more bummed out Wanda got, the stronger she got. Thanos fought Thor, Iron Man, and Captain America like it was a Sunday afternoon, but when Wanda was making sure Thanos knew her name, he panicked for the first time ever. And Hayward thought, let's mess with that. The result was Wanda firing off so much power she attracted another person with the big brain idea of messing with the super powerful being who is going through some stuff. Now she's dipping into her Nexus powers to make her pretend boys real boys. But as a Nexus being, what she does in reality is inherently that reality, even if she redoes it. Then there's the Loki variant Sylvie who killed the one being trying to hold the whole timeline together to prevent his other selves from power grabbing the entire multiverse. Being the one cross-time Kang to remain, this Kang actually put Sylvie on her path to meet the Loki that stepped out of the timeline while the Avengers were actively breaking the timeline, which Loki was told was supposed to happen. But Loki is told a lot of things. With just those two things, Doctor Strange has a lot of cleanup to do. And we know that Scarlet Witch will appear, but she may be taking somebody else's blame. There's been a fair bit of mystery surrounding just what exactly did Steve Rogers do when he tripped through time on his own? Did he immediately throw his shield at the Red Skull at Vormir? Maybe he caught him as he was packing his bag, free of his obligation, and Cap got to go, not so fast, as he threw the Soul Stone back where it came from. But the real bone of contention has been what reality he was in. The screenwriters say, the current one. The directors say, a different one. Which one is the sacred timeline, and is this why there's someone who looks suspiciously like Peggy Carter being escorted by a time agent and Loki? There's definitely something that seems broken here that the TVA would have tried to fix. So did Steve break the timelines before Sylvie got a chance to get her stab on? So, why was the Avenger time-traveling shenanigans supposed to happen but Loki can't peace out in his own little branch reality? More importantly, what makes Cap's side quest more valid than Loki's? Make no mistake, Steve Rogers messes with more than a few things by stepping off the time travel trip and staying with Peggy. If you ignore the are they aren't they massive continuity between the former Marvel Entertainment properties and the Marvel Studio ones, Peggy had a productive post-war life of having to reconvince the OSS that she was a vital member which eventually involves Howard Stark forming the new shield around her. It involves a lot of her saying things like, do as Peggy says. Works for me. But maybe all of that is a live action what if. It could be reality observed only by Watu and people who watched it on ABC. Sure, the flesh and blood Jarvis cameoed in Endgame, one of the only TV characters to make the leap so far, but that doesn't mean the connection can't be undone. The movies have some tricky needles to thread if Cap stayed in the timeline. That means he has kids. Isaiah Bradley's children were able to inherit their father and grandfather's super soldier stuff. But maybe they decided that just because they can flip over a car doesn't mean they have to go get a costume and fight aliens, robots, and wizards. Sharon Carter definitely has some time to think about her relationship with her uncle. And where did he go when she fell ill? The easier explanation is that he lived in a divergent timeline. But then why was that allowed along with all the other time traveling nonsense? Well, there's two possibilities that work together well. First is Immortus, aka He Who Remains, aka Kang the Conqueror. If you want to be THE Conqueror, then why not have a plucky team of Earthlings take out your competition in the form of the Mad Titan? But if he's pushing the pieces around for his sacred timeline, why not just adjust Thor's aim to get Peter Quill to chill a minute while Spider-Man and Iron Man steal the gauntlet? It's because He Who Remains NEEDS Cap to break the timeline. This relies on the quick but much talked about appearance of a city in the Quantum Realm. That city, sharp-eyed fans with precision pause buttons have theorized that is none other than Chronopolis, Kang's multi-reality mashup of a home base. It's a city made up of slivers of other realities that Kang has conquered. Think of it as the ultimate trophy room. 
Being tucked away in the quantum realm could be a safe place to stash it, but safe for who? Perhaps it's Captain America's many trips to the quantum realm on his return the stones tour that freed he who remains from a time lock prison, allowing him to become the kangiest of all the kangs. Then he would need that anomaly. That would mean that Rogers is responsible for both the rise and fall of He Who Remains. There are other complications on deck in this scenario. For instance, poor old Red Guardian. When we meet him, he was bragging about a fight he had with Captain America during the Cold War. The problem, of course, is that the MCU's Steve Rogers slept through the Cold War not coming out of the ice until the 21st century. Was Red Guardian making things up, or does he know something that even the Avengers didn't know? That Captain America was operating in secret the whole time. I mean, how secret could he be if he was still using the iconic shield? But most people wouldn't jump straight to Steve Rogers is back if someone starts doing super stealth missions supported by his wife that runs a super spy program. I mean, sure, a super spy organization that has been infiltrated by Hydra, and that Cap would know about because earlier in his life, in the future, he outed them. Time travel, as always, is complicated. But instead of braggadocio, Red Guardian was telling us that Captain America was doing a lot more superheroing than anyone thought. That's how He Who Remains keeps the timeline sacred. This would mean that Rogers could be the one who frees He Who Remains and who ultimately broke the timeline. Because no matter how you measure it, Cap created an anomaly. He existed as a dancing kissing machine as well as a capsicle and eventual Avenger. Now apparently, two variants can occupy a reality without borking it completely unless they head in for the most awkward of kisses. But keeping Steve Rogers trying to hide in his time-traveling retirement means that a lot of effort has to be put into managing all the branching realities that his very existence would cause. This could be why we see a potential Peggy Carter in the background at the TVA getting escorted to her time trial. In this case, the TVA might have been given the counterintuitive task of pruning the Peggy Carter that would logically exist where she meets D'Souza and fights with Dottie and forms S.H.I.E.L.D. and instead supplants it with the one that has two Steve Rogers in it. But then, Steve sneaks out of quarantine and passes the shield to Sam. Three weeks later, Wanda breaks reality and creates a sitcom wonderland in Westview, New Jersey. Loki started all the way back in 2012 and only takes a few days of his time. But then time is funny at the TVA, and He Who Remains sits at the end of time when Sylvie does her thing. It could be that her actions loosening the grip allowing Steve to give the shield away, or Steve doing that weakened the fabric of the sacred timeline allowing a pair of Lokis to confront the ultimate Kangs. Of course, the big question then is who put Kang there? Or, if Chronopolis was the prison that he was keeping the Crosstime Kangs in and just needed the Avenger to hitch a ride on to get out? Or, Roger's shenanigans slipped under the Kang radar because it poked a hole into the Beyonder's dimension? Ooh, Beyonder.